بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد ان الله هو الله ربنا سنت تما سترو say he is allah the one Allah, the eternally bestowed of all, He begetteth not, nor was begotten, and there is none comparable unto Him. Salam ala Rasul al-Kareem, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi, wa man istanna bi sunnati la yawmiddin. All praises due to Allah, and your last peace and blessings, and His last Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day. The topic that I will be discussing or presenting this evening is that of the Islamic concept of God. A question that Muslims are often asked, what is it about Islam which makes it unique or different from other religions that teach the belief in God and doing righteous deeds? The answer to that question lies in the Islamic concept of God. This concept is particular to Islam, though most religions believe in God or in one God, the approach or the concept which is held by Islam takes the idea of oneness to a level which cannot be found in any of the other religions. The Quran in the 112th chapter, in four short verses, sums up the Islamic concept of God. And in these four verses, we find the elements of what makes the Islamic concept unique and different from all other religions. This chapter of the Quran, it is called Surah Al-Ikhlas, that is the chapter of sincere belief, or it is sometimes referred to as Surah Al-Tawheed, or the chapter of the monotheistic concept of God. This chapter has been referred to by the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, as being equivalent in value to one-third of the Qur'an. That is, if we were to take the Qur'an and to divide it up into sections based on the information which is contained in it, we would find that approximately one-third of what is talked about in the Qur'an is the oneness of God. The chapter begins, the first verse, saying, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say, Allah is unique. The term Allah is in itself unique. The word is translated as God. In fact, there is another term in Arabic which is used to refer to God. Ilah. 
But the term Allah is different from Ilah in the sense that the term Ilah, like the English term God, can be made plural. You can have God, Aliha, or you can have a goddess, Ilaha. You have Godson, Goddaughter, etc. Whereas in the case of the term Allah, it cannot be made plural, cannot be made feminine. It is not used in any kind of construction wherein it represents some part of God's creation. So this verse, the first of the four short verses of this chapter, the 112th chapter of the Quran, begins telling those who read the Quran, telling the Prophet who first received the Quran, may God peace and blessings be upon him, to pronounce to people, to proclaim to people that Allah is unique. He is in the Arabic term Ahad. Ahad, unique being different from Wahid. Wahid, which means one in Arabic. Ahad goes beyond the concept of one. Because when we use the term one, I can say, for example, I have one pen, and you can have one pen. But when we use this term in reference to Allah, we are talking about a oneness which is a uniqueness. That is, that there is no other like Him. He is unique in all aspects. It means that He, God, does not have the attributes of His creation nor does his creation have because if he had the attributes of his creation he would no longer be unique and if his creation had his attributes again he would no longer be unique Allah goes on to say in the Quran in the second of these four short verses Allah is Samad Allah, unique one, God, is the one on whom all things depend. This is an aspect of his uniqueness, that all of creation depends upon God. Whether the creation recognizes that it depends upon God or not, it still depends upon God. And it is because of this principle that worship belongs to God alone. This is part of the uniqueness of God. Since all things depend on Him, then any aspect of worship should go only to Him. Any and every aspect of worship should go to Him alone. This is based on the fact that he is the one on whom all things depend. Now, what this means is that the various religions which exist in the world, all of which in one way, shape or form is involved in the worship of what they believe to be God. However, when you get into the essence of these various religions, you will find that they are in fact worshipping God's creation. Though they claim to be worshipping, or the, the, those who worship believe that they are worshipping God. If we find a people worshipping a tree, we will say the worship of the tree is nonsense. It could not possibly bring them any good. 
However, those people who worship 